here's the story why I almost returned the Fujifilm X100V. Week, I was on a trip to Iceland and it was the first time ever bringing along the Fujifilm X100V. Now up until this point I've mostly just been experimenting at home just documenting everyday life with friends and family but this could be the first time ever that I would actually bring this camera on an epic trip to an epic location like Iceland. So it's pretty obvious to say, but I was very excited. Now going to this trip, I still hadn't really dialed in the Fujifilm recipe or the look that I was going for. So going into the trip and starting a shoot, I just wasn't actually really enjoying the process. I feel like the photos were just coming out way too cool and just not the look that I was quite going for. As well, because this was a really new camp for me and up until this point I've mostly just been experimenting at home, the difference between being at home and just casually shooting versus being on a location where you really want to capture specific moments or get certain kinds of shots and it's just not happening, it can be really hectic and just frustrating. I felt like I was fumbling with the buttons and the menus and I wasn't in control of the camera and the way it was shooting. And if I'm brutally honest, I just wasn't really enjoying the process. After day one of the trip, I kind of noticed that my Fujifilm X100V was becoming more of a prop than an actual camera that I was shooting with. And if I'm honest, I started wondering, did I just make a really big mistake by paying $1,600 for a camera? Was I just falling for the hype and this actually wasn't the everyday carry camera that I was hoping it would be? Now on day two of the trip, my good friend Gunner probably noticed that I wasn't shooting much with the camera and he asked me, hey, what's up? Why aren't you shooting with the Fujifilm X100V? You were so excited to bring it out on this trip and I started explaining to him how I just haven't been able to find the recipe that I was looking for and I just feel like I'm not getting the kind of photos that I want to get and Gunnar was super cool he's like well why don't we just sit down and try to test out different looks and recipes and figure out the look that you want for the camera so we started testing out in this coffee shop trying out different recipes different adjustments and all of a sudden it was starting to look a lot more closer to what I was looking for because for me my style is very you know warm earthy tones that's the kind of photos that I like so we were testing out these different looks and recipes and we started doing a few photos in the parking lot of Gunner with his lava jeep and all of a sudden I was like dang this is starting to look actually really good this is the look that I'm looking for and all of a sudden I felt this new wave of energy to take out this camera and start just documenting the moments of the trip because that's what I wanted this camera for I want it to be kind of like a documentary camera where I just capture moments from the trip now some of you guys might be wondering well why didn't you just shoot the photos and then just edit them afterwards as raw photos, you can manipulate the photos, change the white balance, all that, and the look afterwards. Well, for me, the main reason to get this camera was that I wanted the look to be all done in camera, shooting in JPEG, meaning that I wouldn't have to edit afterwards, and I would just have the photos right away, ready to go as memories from the trip. So that's why for me, it was really important for me to dial in the recipe and the look that I was gonna bake into all the JPEG photos I'm taking. Anyways, at this point, you're probably wondering, well, what was the Fujifilm recipe that we're using? Which settings did you choose in order to get that look for your photos? And I thought I'd just go over them with you one by one. So for my recipe, I was using the classic Chrome film simulation. Then I had selected dynamic range 200. For the tone curves, I had highlights at minus two and shadows as well at minus two. This just drops the highlights and gives a little bit more darks in the shadows. And I like that kind of, you know, dropped highlights, but still kind of contrasty look to the photos. For color, I had plus one, noise reduction, minus one, sharpness, plus one. Clarity, I had a zero. I noticed that if you have clarity higher than zero or below zero, it takes photos really slowly and I didn't want to miss moments so I actually just put the clarity at zero even if it would have been nice to adjust the clarity to plus or minus but I just left it at zero because of that factor. For grain effect I had strong and then small and then for the color chrome effect I had at weak and then for the color chrome effect blue as well I had at weak. And then for the colors I had white balance at auto and then I had an adjustment where it automatically leans to red two and then blue minus five giving me that nice earthy warm tone to the photos. So yeah, that was my Fujifilm recipe for these photos. In no way is it perfect yet, or am I 100% satisfied, but it's definitely in the direction where I wanna go and I can keep just adjusting and playing around with the recipes, which I think is a really fun part of shooting with the Fujifilm X100V 
because you can just keep experimenting and get different looks with the film simulations and recipes. Now, the reason why I want to share this story with you guys was to give you guys the real behind the scenes look of what it's like sometimes to be on these trips. It's not always so glamorous or epic. Actually, sometimes it can be really, really frustrating. But I guess that's often what success looks like. In order to succeed, you need to grow. And in order to grow, there's gonna be a lot of failure and failure results in a lot of frustration. So you gotta be frustrated because you're failing and because you're failing, you're gonna grow. And because you're growing, you're gonna succeed if you catch my drift. So I guess just take it as an encouragement for me Things don't always work out the way you think it's gonna be, but just keep going with the punches, learn from your mistakes and your failures, grow, and eventually you are gonna succeed like I feel like I'm finally succeeding or getting the desired outcome from this camera, the Fujifilm X100V. So yeah, a little bit of story time from Iceland. To be honest though, I don't know why I was being so naive thinking that you just go and pick up a new camera and all of a sudden you're gonna be able to take amazing photos. Of course, there's a learning curve, Teppo. Of course, there's gonna be that learning curve, but for some reason I just forgot what it's like to learn how to use a new camera. The last time I learned how to use a new camera was when I jumped from Canon to Sony and now from Sony to the Fujifilm X100V.